And welcome to the Wasia Winter Overwatch Grand Final Finals. Excuse me. Happy to be back in the booth here and with a familiar face. So, um, how are we doing tonight? Ah, it's good to be back for Finals Day, Hasa. It's good to have you in the booth for it, especially when a time like this happens. It turns out I was going to say it happens only once a year, but I guess history repeats because we're getting a run back here. As we'll see, the Camus Papermakers take on the Burlington Edison Tigers. It's a repeat in history. Teams fought last year in the last split and man I, I missed last year so i'm glad i'm getting to see it this year because it should be a banger of a match to close out the season yeah and i, I mean you were kind of talking to me a little bit before we got going Camus not dropping a single map as oh, well wow. so they've been pretty dominant in there now on the other side of things the be tigers four of five seniors returning so maybe having a, a similar roster and a similar team chemistry could certainly help them and maybe give them that extra edge this year yeah I mean, when you think about it, you have a bunch of experienced players. You have guys that know how to play together, have been playing together probably since this group's, you know, inception. The, the you know, the down the, the line problem is that this is most of your core team leaving. So Burlington and Tigers, you want to send these seniors off with a win. You want to come up from behind and take this victory. So you're really, really pushing for all these seniors to get sent off on such a high note like this. Yeah, and, and I mean, I guess we talked a little bit about the map pick as well. You said Camus did very, very well on the same map mm -hmm. last week. And uh, I mean, maybe looking to keep that rolling here on Gibraltar. Yeah, I mean, it's, so first map one is going to be Gibraltar. It is Camus's pick. And I mean, if you tuned in yesterday, man, you saw what Camus did versus, uh, versus the Rogers Pirates. And they looked a dominant force on that. They maintained the high grounds. They controlled it. Their, dived, their dive comp looked spectacular clearly something out of a textbook and that's the thing that i think if you are canvas you're not worried you got your first pick doesn't matter attack or, or defense first you know exactly what you're going to do you are prepared and you know your squad has played this map you're coming into this field and nice and warmed up yeah you know and it always helps to have a good pc as well seattle built pcs ultimate performance one of a kind aesthetics with that small business value we certainly appreciate them here tonight as well but i'm excited to get into this first one excited but normally doing that rocket league so uh you know just happy to be back here for some overwatch yeah. and just happy to be back with you so Ab. yeah I say it's been a long time i know we got some history and i know this is our first together for this but i mean it's what a banger to start out on when you look at Gibraltar, it's first to two. It's going to be, you know, a tough lineup. Every single map, every single point is going to matter going into this. So, you know, every single second here matters. This is what you came the whole way through the season for. And to kick it off, we're going to get a look at what both of these teams are expecting. And I, I kind of alluded to it a little bit and though before and a little bit on screen. But the dive from the paper makers, that defensive dive with the Diva, the Tracer, the Sombra, it was just just beautiful i mean storm over on that dps was incredible uh and uh as it looks like they've had a little bit of a change up there but uh of, of players but um you know just the phenomenal dive set up uh rebel in particular on that lucio just a key throughout so much of their success storm on that diva yeah that's what i was thinking was uh just looked phenomenal uh just to keep those high grounds and tuna's tracer was just just perfectly exactly where it needed to be in all times across from them though Burlington Edison like this is the one thing that I, this is the matchup I wanted to see cyber on this Farah with no real hit scan quote unquote is going to be a monster across from them it's really going to put a lot of pressure on storm to cover and play more defensively so watch out for that Farah that pharmacy in the sky because that flying hit squad is going to be difficult to deal with especially versus this dive yeah, there's so many vertical changes here as well a lot of hype that can be taken so it can make it a little more difficult on the offensive side of things but certainly that diva can help push them off and maybe get things rolling help create some of that space as we get things underway we'll get out to the payload here quickly and we can see genji just looking for a little intel as well they begin to make this push around the bend and honestly giving up a lot more space than anticipated here on defense 
Now, this is like a pretty standard point to hold. You have the highest ground. You're going to force the D.Va and you're going to force the Far to really pressure you out here. And then the exchange for that is you get the, the payload will just roll if it goes uncontested. Your, your theory is that you're going to hold the high ground and just make it more difficult to hit those shots and get picks, play a little bit closer. But Azuken is going to be the first pick there. Yeah, and I love these play from the Diva going out, flying back up top as well, doing a great job of maintaining control there as well of that space. Now in the face is Hanzo as well. Tuna does find one, but Lightem finds the two-piece combo as well and able to come back set up. We see that far we knew was going to be a bit of an issue up top, raining down a hailstorm of rockets. Storm will find one. Lucio on the run here as well, but again, just great control. Yeah, I mean, just a great read. Really, just you managed to push them off the high ground, and now suddenly you have to play out of the server room where you have the cover if you're the Tigers, but uh, or, I'm sorry, if you are Camus, but you have so much more to play with. But two picks means that this push is over, Hot Sauce. Yeah, it's just so tough, and you never want to fall into that position where you find yourself staggering, especially in an important series like yeah. this. So able to fall back, kind of regroup, maybe talk over some strategies and figure out how the. I mean, they got a lot of ground on the payload, but of course, still up top, here is Camus. They're going to hold that. I mean, they are holding out to Pulse Bomb and a Coalescence. Coalescence is going to be a little bit difficult for the paper makers to get value with here, especially given this verticality. Uh, all it's going to, they're going to have to try to save it and use it for heals here. Cyber's looking in. There's the barrage just to kick it off. Finds one. Yeah, the barrage always huge. Kind of, you know, puts you in a, a, a tough place as well as you are caught out in the open, but able to capitalize here. We see James does get one, and that's a big pick onto Mercy as well. The coalescence comes out, and this is going to be big. The kill streak comes in. Storm, Tuna, all collecting kills as well. And with that, it would be a big play here. Yeah, uh, it was a very cheap play at that, too, because the papermaker's only really committed the coalescence, and it was enough to get the value you traded for it. So uh, you'll be rewarded with the other four ults for the papermakers on this defense, and minute 40 on the clock. Uh, this blade doesn't really have a lot behind it for Adra, but uh, there's no defensive. You know, if you can move quick enough, you have to get the Lucio out of the picture first. If you can get this Lucio gone out of the picture, Adra with a boost on this blade should be enough to get maybe the rest of the way to A here. Yeah, getting Lucio gone is easier said than done from up here, especially when they have that movement ability and they're able to get around so well. And we thought maybe far would be a bit of a problem for the lack of hit scan. Hanzo and the crew doing a fine job at the moment, but the alts are on deck and they are ready to flex. That's four. Diva's going to pop one as well. Mercy up into the sky. Lucio as well. So three alts, though, extended here, and you got to hope that it's not too much. No, this looks like it could be an overextension, especially with that second sound barrier coming in. Second sound barrier as well. We see Hanzo on the back pedal has all here. Genji with the blade and Storm finds one. Genji does get Hanzo, however. Diva into the alt will be able to get back into the mech here. Tracer really trying to apply some pressure and just kind of get in those back lines, cause a mix. But again, Camus just doing such a good job at holding here. Yeah, I, and a lot of it is this back line here. This Lawyer Lucio, there's so much healing and they're so quickly on that coalescence. It just allows you to cycle those defensive ultimates, those support ultimates faster and keeps your foot team in the fight longer, especially when they're all zipping around and you just cannot tie them down. Yeah, I mean, especially what I think it's a 10% increase in the ultimate charge yep. as well with that change now in the play. A lot of things certainly have changed. Of course, everybody gets a little bit of that health boost as well. But again, really not affecting there. And this Lucio has just been a key factor for Camus over here. Yeah, Camus absolutely understands this dive comp and Revel. Again, just a key point to that. There will be the overtime and the Barrage gets one. So there's two. That's They're, they're still live here, Hot Sauce. Yeah, two big picks from the Barrage. James finds one here as well. A bit of back and forth. Cyber was able to get two before taking out. Kuzan, though, has the ult and will flex it here. Should be able to push him off the payload. The contention, though, still coming in. Looking around, trying to find these shots. Storm will get one. No, excuse me. That was Anra who found the kill. Actually, the D-Mech and the Mech back here now. But oh. Tuna with a big play, and that could be it. Yeah, that's enough to clean off point. And this is this is what I was... This is my worst-case scenario for Burlington Edison genuinely is that you know this team they got their first pick this is their map and this is one of those points they're very clearly trained on and not all the teams will play this but they know and now i mean now we flip sides paper makers have just a hop skip and a jump to go like it's what 78 meters they don't even have to clear first point this is this can be over in as quick as a fight hot sauce all it's going to take is just a clean five and for the cart to not get interrupted and we could already see this map done yeah, I mean, you talked about how well they did on this map last week. Certainly, they feel very, very comfortable, and it obviously shows uh, as they're performing very, very well. And you know it. I mean, they only, they barely even have to get 
for that first checkpoint, not even two. So not far to go. Just one quick engagement where they win the fight, possibly get a team kill. Could be all for map number one. Looking at the Tigers, I, I'm, I'm interested. This makes sense to me. We're bringing in, you know, we're playing the Sombra so we can hack uh, on the on the dive, on the approach. We're bringing in the May so we can create an isolation, slow them down. We're bringing in the Brig for, you know, the stun. I like all these pieces. I'm just not sure that there's enough damage behind this to back it up. I'm kind of looking at this comp and it feels a little low damage. Who are you going to count on to complete the kills? Because it's not necessary, uh, necessarily Anra. Not necessarily cyber it's gonna have to kind of look to one of the, to care site on the tank maybe to complete the damage especially when storm has this huge health pool and wrecking ball if that just continues to grow every time he dives and, and caches in an ability yeah you know you talk about how the the comp the, you know overall there's some really good picks there but how well can they mesh together with this it's certainly going to be very tough for them but we'll see if they could obviously lucio already in the back line as well but they're going to find this pick on lucio and maybe this may does help a little bit able to slow them down so they can find that damage that they maybe couldn't connect with on that overly super aggressive uh, lucio in the first half yeah and this lucio is going to be key again to keeping you know the team that gets in there and dives Bully, having that full four-man hit squad on the dive is so important. And thankfully for the paper makers, you know, their Lucio's back quickly. So, I mean, still in the neutral, this is still uh, just still just going to come down to the first pick here. Whoever gets the first pick is going to decide this. Yeah. Oh, and just like that, James will find it on the Anra. We'll see if they can collect more. A lot of trouble here. The lamp will go out, but it's destroyed quickly as they've already lost two. Cyber able to get the health back in time, though. Anra will respawn. Can they get back in time? Storm has fallen, so without that tank, they might be able to hang on to this pressure here. Yeah, the rest of the pieces are still back, and that's the other thing this team has going for it, is a lot of self-sustain between the Brig and the Baptiste. You do have a way to get through it, but if Tuna just gets left uncontested, they can just run through this line just oh like they my. are. Tuna so good here to find two as well. And Tracer's just so good at that, right? Being annoying yeah. in the back line, asking, causing you to call out for help, uh, you know, getting your teammates to turn around, trying to find things. So just so much space being created, even in that back line there as well. And we can see him kind of pushing with ease. Just the stagger comes in, but they really don't have an option here. So they just have to go and find a way and hope that they can get a stop here. Yeah, James just kind of pushing through, denying that. Denying that's gone, and then Tuna with another double pulse means that this is this is over, Hot Sauce. Yeah, Tuna has been an absolute playmaker yeah. here as well, but it's hard to pick just yeah. one person, right? That's the thing about Camus is they play so yeah. well together, a very good cohesive unit here, and they certainly displayed that in this map number one. I agree with you completely, but I think you're going to see it. It's Tuna, right? Tuna has been the name in the kill feed, and a lot of these dives, a lot of these setups from the team, you know, you talked about the Papermakers being a solid team. It really comes down to these final blows on the Tracer. Tuna coming in, sticking those pulse bombs, making sure that they hit every single shot and follow up on those low healing targets. If you don't have that follow up and you don't complete those kills, this dive doesn't work. Everybody gets healed up and you're, all that damage, all that coordination was for loss. So that level of coordination is what makes you a champion. That level of, of coordination is what makes you a champion a second time. Yeah, and Tuna, certainly the tracking skills were phenomenal. Not really missing yeah. many of those shots. Obviously, the projectile increase does help, yeah. but certainly just a, a great display of tracking and crosshair placement. We saw him flicking to the lamp, making sure to take that out first as well. Just really good situational awareness from the whole crew of Camus as well. And I think maybe that's why they took that first one with ease. We see teams, though, maybe, you know, sometimes they're much better at hybrid or pushing the payload mm -hmm. than they are at control. Sometimes things can swap around. Obviously, you have a little bit more no than I do as you've been casting throughout the season. Oh, yeah. But, you know, can the Tigers find a way to, to inch back in here on control point, which I believe will be their map pick. Uh, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, Slap. No, you are correct on that. They will have the choice on, on control. So it, it, I will say a lot of these control maps do work in their way. When you look at the team like the Tigers, you know, having checked them through the season, uh, the Fara is really their focal point, that kind of pharmacy, and getting that 2-3 kind of a split squad that really follows up on the pharmacy's damage has been so important to their success. That's what got them here. And Gibraltar doesn't really lend itself to that kind of a map, unfortunately, that style. So moving now to control, where you have Lijong Tower, where you have Elios, where you have a lot of these flat maps, and you can kind of get stationary and set up, and you have some cover to play around, this is where I would expect... Uh, I would expect the Tigers to, to double down on the pharmacy and maybe try to play around that. The only thing I can see that they need to adapt into is just making sure that they play to counter this dive. They need the other three to, to adapt into that because the pharmacy is pretty safe in the air for the most part, aside from the D.Va. But, 
you know, the rest of the squad, the other three, still have some problems if they get left alone. They're going to get picked off and isolated. Yeah, and I always look to see, you know, how is the ability to adapt and overcome? Are they able to switch between the characters and counter, you know, potentially what they're going up against? And I think that's kind of what separates some of those champions from the great champions. I know sometimes in that younger tier play, uh, you see them just kind of stick with what they're comfortable to or they're used to dominating with. But sometimes you got to step out of that comfort zone if it means helping out your team, maybe finding that counter to that tracer who's absolutely popping off or, or something like that. I think you've nailed it. I mean, we've talked about and we've seen over the years, you know, there was the debate, is hero swapping good, is hero swapping bad? And, you know, we've seen it through the devs' eyes too, and they've said, no, we want to see people change heroes. We want to see that skill, that knowledge rewarded. And I think this is that chance to do that. If you know your opponent's going to be playing a dive, if you know that's something where your opponent succeeds, you have to account for that. So bring in those niche picks, those odd picks, bring in your junk rats. Bring in whatever it takes to stop the ball, to stop the tracer. Those adaptations, I want to say, I'm, you know, we're, we're asking them to do more. Those adaptations were right. I really do like a lot of what the Tiger showed us. I think we just need a little bit of tweaks and give ourselves a map difference to kind of make it all come together and get a win. Now they're going to pick this control. It looks like maybe they're going to Antarctic right. Peninsula so, over there. Antarctic so that's a, an interesting pick. I I, I I like some of the sub maps here, but okay. honestly, this really isn't. This is one of my least favorite uh, maps, at least in my opinion. But I do know a, a lot of people like it. So, yeah. What, what are your What are your thoughts? It's not a bad map. I actually really do like a lot of it. It's got that new kind of fresh Overwatch two vibe to it, where there's a lot more cover, where there's a lot more things to play around. I don't know distinctly that it sounds very like Cyber Far ish to me. Is my concern. So with that in mind, I'm kind of expecting them to play in ways that are going to, you know, bring in the Junkrat, bring in these kinds of anti-dive characters that are really going to punish the dive and try to play into that cover more to make sure they don't get picked. You know, it, targets aren't diveable and nobody's really left out and isolated. That leaks like a good read to me. And in that regard, yeah, I do think this is a solid pick. Yeah, well, and I think, I, I know there's at least one submap, but I think there's two submaps where there is a lot of outside mm -hmm. areas, some really yeah. tall ceilings as well. So potentially you could work it there. I know they have the health pack down below on the one. A lot of times, you know, yes. when the Reaper and things going for that, you could potentially get a boop off the side as well. So I think there are p potential places where FAR could work really well. Uh, but again, it's, it's all about that team chemistry, finding those plays together as well. Because I'm, unlike, you know, Valorant or other games, you have... You, you can't have one member who just pops yeah. off and finds these 1v4 situations. It's a really team-oriented game, so they have to play really, really well together. And like you said, that team, yeah, I th you've nailed it, Hot Sauce. Like, the team orientation is so important. That's what got both of these teams here, right? You know, the very calculated dive of the paper makers, obviously why they're an undefeated champion is playing for two, two in a row. The Tigers, obviously this pharmacy got them so much, and that is not, you know, d look, depending what they might tell you in ranked games, it's harder to make work than it seems, especially when you have a 2-3 split like this. So that level of teamwork is difficult, but that's the team, that's the level of teamwork that makes a champion team. Yeah, I think it's just, it's so tough to deal with Camus's aggressiveness, right? They have, yeah. they're just so in your face, but they're really good at knowing when to pull back, when to come back or the tank to find those heals, play those angles, get refreshed and not, not allow that opposing team to find the first mm -hmm. pick. So that ebb and flow that they seem to have is just, it's really, really fun to watch. I, I couldn't, I couldn't say it better. You, you've been here five minutes and you nailed the team in their essence entirely hot sauce. And I got to commend it to you because you're right. That level of engagement, you can see, you can almost see how crisp like the shot calling and how all the callouts are because of those disengagements. That tells you that all the machines and the engines of the paper makers are working. That paper making engine has just been constantly turning. It's been turning the whole season. And as we go into our first point here for the Antarctic Peninsula, like I said, I, like my instinct is going to say, look, we're gonna swap to Brawl, especially with Sergeant James, uh, basically just playing Moira for the most part. No shade on that. It's a solid character in the right hands, but you know, knowing what I know from the paper makers, like they may opt to swap into a brawl here, especially when high ground isn't as needed. So I wouldn't be shocked if we saw something like a Ramatra ball map heads up here going into this. And all right, I was half right. I, I almost <laughs> got it. Uh, I mean, the Tigers, the Tigers understood. They're going to bring in the Ramatra, and I love that a little bit more. It's a lot more sturdy. It gives you a lot more stability. And Anra on this Cassidy is a literal dead eye absolutely phenomenal aim so i do think this is a great read when you know that there's going to be a dive across from you and speaking of that yeah no changes from the paper makers they have no 
it didn't it ain't broke don't fix it like yeah, this, yeah, this right? reads right yeah this is <laughs> reads like the this is going to be a good matchup on most of these players comfort picks i love this yeah i love ramatra so i really like the switch there obviously if anra can find that dead eye that cassidy uh the good shots as you're saying that's nice and then you have that mercy with the far this time as well so hopefully that little extra boost can give them what they need to maybe tie the series up and push it to that map three i love overwatch so i would love to go to a map three I mean, I would much love that as much as uh, Anra just wants Lightum to stay a staple, but it's going to be a difficult map for Flight for Lightum because they have to float between Cyber and Anra to really find the value. So important decision making from this from the support here. Yeah, at the same time, no real hit scan. Obviously, it didn't really affect him too much last time for Kamas, but maybe this time that little extra with mm -hmm. the Mercy seems to be helping. They find the first three picks. Mercy does finally fall, but it does give him a chance to find the point, have that edge as well. And obviously, they have the ball. They can get back quick, but you don't want to find yourself back there too quick. You don't want to get staggered, especially too early before the game gets out of hand. Yeah, and I mean, this first pick from the Tigers tells me exactly what I was hoping for. And Dudarius leading the way on the charge, uh, the ult charge tells me everything has been going well means that the Ramatra has stayed up this whole way through so uh, a great just split two three two three comp from the Tigers looking good and two easy picks means that they are just going to maintain this control yeah Romatra has just been a phenomenal pick for them thus far and I, I, again I love it it's just something about when you you just throwing those fists in the face of your opponent it just mm -hmm. feels really good <laughs> I mean, you gotta catch the, you gotta watch out. You'll catch those hands. But Tuna is coming up to a pulse bomb. Someone's gonna catch this pulse bomb. So keeping an eye out for Tuna is gonna be the number one importance if you're tracking ultimates here. Tuna catches the pulse bomb and it's over. Yeah, we saw Tuna. I think get two separate double kills with that pulse bomb last time as well. So very, you know, just a very good job at finding ways to get into that back line, finding those picks, recalling out, using that additional health, and kind of alleviating some of the pressure from your own healers as well. Yeah, I mean, you called out earlier about, you know, the team, the, the ability to disengage and uh, the paper makers have been doing that. They'll lose one, they'll get out, they'll, they'll bring the respect. James will pick up the Zenyatta here to try to even out the score. I like the Discord orb just to give your team a little bit of balance, but he's so easily picked off like that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's a, I think it's a good switch as well, but when you're the first one down now, it really puts your team at a detriment here. And Storm, not much health as well. Close to the alt. Tuna has the alt, but gets taken out first as well. Genji's going to fall here as well. And the Romatra change has been absolutely huge for the Burlington Edison Tigers. I love this. Yeah, the, these changes have been perfect. Now in last fight territory, every single fight has been has been won without an ultimate and the tigers now have four on board they spent you know they spent the barrage but it really doesn't mean anything here they have such space control coming in yeah again i mean we see them now lose lucio as well they try to hang on to the fight they have the ball rolling around trying to create that distraction just peppering in a little damage here and there but i don't think it's going to be enough as they lose genji as well tuna's going to fall and now they find themselves in big trouble not really getting to utilize utilize those alts like they wanted to and ramatra just throwing the fist overtime is upon us but i feel like it's not too long here yeah, it's it's gonna burn down super quickly. Yeah, that was the Tigers I expected. They they came back and they roared right in the face of the paper makers with that. This was the this is the changes we wanted for, right? This is exactly yeah. what we asked them. Adapt, you know, find those things that are going to work. You know your pieces, you've made it to the championships. We know you know how to do this. We know what your team likes to do. And this is the changes, yeah. I don't know how the paper makers are going to adapt this though, because this is a very good foil for the comp. James is going to give up back to... Okay, we're going to figure it out, make some swaps here. It looks like we're going to forego the Lucio. And that's an interesting change of pace here. For, okay, they're thinking about it. Don't think <laughs> me like that. Please don't. Well, because I like the Zen. I think Lucio Zen was the right call. Yeah. I think that was the right call here when you look at these big targets that need to get pressured out and just making the threat of the Discord Orb. That little bit of extra damage can make the difference between a Pharmacy in the sky and the Pharmacy dead on the ground. Yeah, unfortunately, again, they still don't have any hit scan. So, uh, you know, even when that Discord goes out, are they having trouble maybe hitting those air targets? Obviously, you want to try to chunk down the ones on the ground if you can. But again, I mean, the Tigers making the perfect switch. You, I, I would love to be there in person and hear them screaming as, you know, oh, they're yeah. going back and forth. But uh, you couldn't ask for a better Grand Finals. Not at all, especially making this 100-0 after getting kind of bullied, quite honestly, on Gibraltar. This is a great read. And I mean, it's still so very early, but Anra already at 42 of their ultimate charge. They're hitting shots. They're cleaning it up in cybers. They're following it up. The DPS line for Burlington Edison Tigers is on fire right now. 
Yeah, they're doing a great job of picking off Tuna, really not allowing Tuna to get in that back line and cause that disruption that they did so well on Gibraltar. And, of course, you talked about Farah being a staple for them and certainly doing a great job here, raining down a plethora of damage that, well, they're just having a little bit, uh, a little bit too much trouble with at the moment. Yeah, like you said, with no hit scan available, you know, you don't really have a target. I would love to see someone give up and go to a soldier, probably Tuna, just because that you know your Tracer is so just so checked right now across the Cassidy and the Baptiste. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. You, you've been phenomenal with the tracking. Your shots are on. Soldier could be a perfect opportunity here. And, and Soldier's so good with these changes as well. He just puts out so much damage, has the ability to heal as well. So again, it kind of helps alleviate some of the pressure from your own healers. Lightem does fall, but again, they get another couple big picks here. And we will see just that. So Abtuna going to the Soldier. That's what we wanted. Again, it's all about adaptability. If you want to prove you're a champion, and this is the changes you got to make here. Uh, good thing for the paper makers, they are coming to self destruct, and they are coming in to the into the sound barrier. So tools are there. You're gonna need them though, because there's three across from you. So pacing out this sound barrier is gonna be important. Yeah, and you know maybe Cyber wants to wait until that sound barrier is done. Has the ult as well, and will pop it right after. It looks like trades going back and forth, but a curse site only gets one. Tuna, Royal, and Storm all finding kills. James gets one as well, and that is a big push that they very desperately needed. Mm. Especially off the back of that aggressive sound barrier, I think that was the right call. They used it proactively, caught. The, caught the Tigers off guard and just swarmed them with that. And then they were unable to just constantly stay on speed, focus down targets, and do what they do best. Unfortunately, that was most of the gas in the tank, though, Hot Sauce, because mm. there's only a Genji Blade for Okuzin, and there is a Valkyrie. It's not necessarily going to stop it, but you have to get past the healing from the Valkyrie and the Immortality field. It's not going to be an easy Blade if Okuzin wants to keep control of this, so a lot to fight through to keep this, this lead going. Yeah, luckily for the Tigers, they did build a decent lead here, nearly 60%, so that gives them some time to work with. They don't have to get over-aggressive here. They want to apply that damage, see if they can find that pick and give them the ability to pressure on and take control of the hill. But there's that ebb and flow that we talked about. The Coalescence comes out, but instantly dropped. Cyber and Adra coming up with two huge kills. Mercy now floating around on the backfield. Storm nearly gone here as well, able to hang on for just a little bit longer. But it looks like the Tigers will retake the point, and what a big team fight for them. That was huge, especially getting James's coalescence. James went a little bit deep, maybe a little too, maybe a little too ambitious, trying to get the isolation onto Lightem. It worked once in the past, but unfortunately, just got punished this time. And now with Tuna pairing with his visor into the blade, they just need to set up a crossfire, and this can flip back to the paper maker side. There's nothing in the way of it, so creating this crossfire means that they can steal, they can steal the point back. Yeah, at a minimum, I'd like to see the Tigers at least hang on to that 99%, though, to where they only really have to push in and win that one more team fight. They seem to do well, Tuna. There it is, the tactical visor. Cursite, though, going to pop the ult as well. A bit of back and forth. Only finds one here, three down now for the Tigers, and they will find themselves in a bit of trouble. But again, they get that 99% point. So now they just have to regroup. We see a couple alts getting very close here as well. Yeah, I, you have Barrage up. You're going to have eventually you're gonna have the uh, amp matrix like they don't pair well together but we do know that both of those have find found value in the past okuzin's still holding onto the blade unfortunately died both times before to do it so uh again it's, it's just a dry blade though i don't see there's much going with it so okuzin might have to use this late in the fight so the later this goes on okuzin could maybe better clean this up for the canvas if they want to hold on and maybe steal this point now we see Ramatra trying to get that space that they need here, trying to pressure in far up into the sky, trying to rain down as well. And we see Genji. Oh, and that's a huge ult from Storm. James will find another. And very well, it looks like we might tie this control up one to one. Yeah, especially with those last two ultimates coming out. They'll take it and we'll get our we'll get our map three. Uh, much more comfortable for Camus. You're much happier with that, I think, considering it's not the zero to 100 you got last map. The changes, you know, it wasn't much changes, but it was just the right changes, right? Bringing in that soldier, that small little bit was the right call. It made the whole difference. They didn't start winning. They didn't win fights until Tuna decided, look, I'm just not getting work done on the Tracer. There are too many counters. There are too many people with eyes on me. I'm going to have to play from inside on the line, and it's the right read. Going back to our final point, though, Icebreaker. All right, now we're seeing more of a classic brawl. I do like Cyber on the May to, pa to pair up with Anra. I like this just... Fundament this fundamentals of the Tigers. Let's just get in isolation. 
let's just punish them for diving us, catch someone out, and win fights that way. It's going to be really important for Lightum to manage that speed. Otherwise, this comp falls apart for the Tigers. Yeah, you know, and we, and we see uh, Snowmed back to Lucio as well. They, they're just very, very comfortable with this comp, only having to change out that that tracer as well. So already here in the middle is James applying that damage, peppering in the heal as well as Moira should. And then we talked about Cyber on the switch here to May again. I, I don't know. I feel like this is a little bit more of one of those open sub maps for that Farah, but obviously they know better than I do. It is a bit more open, but you got to remember there is a ceiling in a lot of it. So it's not like you're going to have to, you're going to put yourself in a way danger. You don't get the cover to play from to protect yourself. And Tuna, you know Tuna's going to stay on that soldier. So they're expecting you and that's what, you know, they came out on it. It's still open trades though. So it's still, although the point did fall to uh, the paper makers first, they'll get it here. I mean, it wasn't as quick and smooth as you'd like, I think. Yeah, but I, I mean, already at 20% now here, kind of having their will, I guess, kind of setting the yeah. pace for this final map, wanting to close it out to win that championship as well. And again, I felt like it, it was a lot easier for them here in this map. And again, in that previous, once they switched to Soldier, I'm not sure if there's something maybe that the Tigers can do to counter that. But again, I feel like it's, it's coming with a little bit more ease here in map three for Camus. I mean, they did. They brought in the Zarya for it. They're going to play to absorb the damage, and they're going to hope that Kersite can carry from the front lines. Anra, though, coming in and Lightum coming into the defensive means that they should be able to stall if this gets a longer fight. Yeah, we see a couple ults there as well. The one from Honora, Lightum has one on deck as well. And they're just trying to make some leeway here. We see the nice shots coming in from Honora as well. Able to tap the dome and hopefully send him home. Lucio though, again, in the mix. Storm's gonna find one. Kursite gets one on the trade as well. And with that, the tank potentially could go down. Eyes are down. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, they lose two members there. So the Tigers should be able to take this one out. Yeah, there's small micro adaptions and winning it without having to commit any ultimates into this is huge for the Tigers. It means that they'll go into this next fight with all four ultimates and they'll just be able to hopefully, you know, not overcommit. They should be able to have an answer for anything thrown their way. Tuna did go back to the Tracer. I think we realized, okay, there's no Farah. Let's just go back to harassing. And that's the plan here. We're just going to go back and try to get Tuna in a position to pick off some of these weaker targets in the back. Yeah, I think that was a great adjustment now with all these alts, though I want to see them kind of pair them up, right? We don't want to use all of the alts at once, but kind of pair a couple of them together so that they can extend the longevity of this hill life here. But a lot of back and forth light them and dude both getting kills on run another. And that's a couple of big plays here for the Tigers once more. Huge. Uh, you essentially got to negate Okuzin's blade too as well for the cost of sound barrier and uh, Graviton Surge, so that's a huge comeuppance. You have Blizzard here for Cyber for the Tigers. It's 40%, but, you know, this Blizzard, as long as it catches someone out, it's going to be, it's going to win you the map. The problem is you have to make sure it lands on one of these speedy little targets with escapes. Uh, it, it it can work, and it can be there. It's going to be their key to getting this, is finding a singular target in this Blizzard that they can freeze up. If they can find that target, the fight is in their hands in the 4v5. The problem is all five of these targets have the ability to just move yeah. with such such quickness as well but again right now peppering some nice shots you see the alt on deck here as well and doing a good job right now maintaining control here hanging around the tank as well i like this kind of hoping that all those bullets kind of sponge into that zarya shield as well now able to Great. slow down big big alt here from may oh unfortunately able to get away yeah, didn't quite catch them in there in those first two picks from Tuna. Just allowed them to come in, hit the pulse bomb, and clean it up. That first pick's so important here. Again, you know, that's what we were kind of hoping was just that the Blizzard would catch one, but the sound barrier from uh, Rayal was was Rebel was there. So that was the changes now. Light, I'm going to go to the Mercy. Looks like there's going to be some more holes changes. Yeah, now we know there's no, yep, it, we're just playing the game now. We know there's no soldiers, so let's just bring it back. We'll bring back the pharmacy and let's steal it. The problem is that we're on to last fight territory for both teams, and that costs you a little bit of ult charge here. You're really dependent now on Anra finding some sort of value between this and the Graviton Surge. There's no defensive, so you have to just play out these mines. And we'll see if they can get it. Of course, you said Anra, but not able to use the ult. Storm no. with the ult first, and we'll capitalize on the kill. Two there as well, with so many members falling. The Tigers find themselves in a bit of trouble. Camus looking to be back-to-back -back champions. James with a coalescence, and what a huge display here by the Camus paper, paper makers. Uh, this was definitely... Look, the scoreline says 2-0. I don't think it was that easy for the no. paper makers. I don't not think it was by any means. I, I think mean, this was definitely, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, look, it says 2-0. When you look at control, like Gibraltar handedly went their way, 
But it was players like James who, you know, made the difference in a lot of these ways by just taking these little off angles, making those aggressive plays on the Moiras that you didn't expect. And that's what gets you here. That's what gets you those championships. That's what makes you clutch up in these kinds of moments where, all right, you lose the first round submap. We have to go to two. Let's make our adaptions and adjust. But it's players like that who are just on their comfort picks and know what they should be doing and know how their role works. But is maybe a little more willing to go aggressive and to want it. You got to have that hunger. And right now, the paper makers showed us they were hungry for a two times championship. Yeah, I mean, we saw James kind of get aggressive and die at time, you know, that one time as well. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't always pay off, but, you know, you, you take that risk and hope for the reward. Yeah. We saw that play of the game there, a huge one from James. But I, I mean, again, if you're the Tigers, yeah, Gibraltar was a little funky, but yeah. you, you pretty much 100 0 the first map. It was 199 the second map and very, very close on that third yeah. map as well. So, I mean, you played a very, very good series of Overwatch. Unfortunately, it doesn't go your way today. Congratulations again to Camus, the winter Overwatch champions as well. And what, just mm -hmm. what a great display from both teams. Super, super fun to watch and super fun to cast. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I have to imagine it was just this good a year ago and we got a, a even better match this time around. So can't wait to see what all these young kids bring the next in the next uh, winter set. And uh, we'll have to say goodbye to some of those seniors, unfortunately, that we're losing to. So, uh, you know, you would have loved to bring home that title for the seniors of the Tigers. But unfortunately, you're just going to have to try again next year. Yeah, I mean, you played really, really well, though. And, and obviously yeah. the collegiate scene has grown, you know, exponentially as well. And, you know, you see you see esports making its way into the Olympics. So there's yeah. so much room for growth for all of these kids and just to play at this level already at this young of age is, is super super fun to see so we certainly appreciate oh, yeah. them we do want to thank everybody at home watching uh everybody that was out supporting whether it's teachers students or friends we certainly appreciate you as well as uh seattle built pcs we want to thank them one more time as well ultimate performance one of kind aesthetics with that small business value but uh so i've is there more this week? I know they have Street Fighter as well. Are those championships coming up? Or maybe you can yeah. uh, let everybody know what's going on. Yeah, I'd say the, the hits keep coming because right, come back here tomorrow uh, for Street Fighter 6 at that same time. It'll be uh, 4 p.m. Western, uh, 6 or 7 Eastern. I don't know. Who cares? We're not, seven. We don't care about that. It's 7. <laughs> yeah, 7. Look, we're, look we're, that's not for us East Coast. It's for you guys in Seattle. So in Seattle and Washington and what have you. But yeah, come back tomorrow. Street Fighter 6 finals are going to be there. And I mean, I've been catching a little bit of the Street Fighters. There's some quite good players out there. Yeah, I wish I wish I could had half those talents in these hands, yeah. but I, I don't. I can't really do the fighting games nope. as well, but always super, super fun to watch. So uh, we look forward to that. Like you said, again, 4 p.m. Pacific. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out. We appreciate everybody again. We'll see you. The Winter uh, Overwatch Championships has come to a close again. Congratulations to the Canvas Paper, ma paper Makers. We certainly hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your week. Take care. And good night. Take care. Take care. Yeah.